just ate something. That's why white the crumbs blend in. They blend in. Well, I guess they show on the road. Gotta start sometime. Gotta start sometime. Well, welcome to 27 Not a Road. As we sit here and talk to you today, our fireside chat. There you are. Uh, this project is finally complete. What a long, strange trip it's been, but yes. Um, but going back, it certainly did not start out like this. No. Dramatically different. Dramatically different. Um, but a fantastic experience. Um, this has been probably one of my favorite projects that we've done. Yeah, this has been because of just, you know, the log cabin and, and the setting. It's been a lot of fun. And we got to do everything. Everything in this, in this house is new. Everything got, uh, every surface was touched, every system was, was changed, upgraded, new, replaced, everything. And we got to do some stuff we've never done before. Concrete countertops is one of them. True. Which turned out nice. They are, I think they're just beautiful. Uh, we got to do a lot of uh, different styles, different styles of uh, trim work, and we did some different doors. Uh, I, you know, it just, we got to do everything and that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, but that's today. And over the next, uh, three episodes of the Real Estate Geeks, we're going to take you through, uh, the entire process of the remodel. And we're going to show you a lot of things that we had to change, a lot of things that, uh, were replaced, are new. We're gonna show you, concrete countertops is a big one I go back to. We're gonna show you how those are poured. Um, and I, I think you're gonna enjoy the next few episodes. Well, I mean, there were a lot of challenges. Anyone's ever attempted to remodel or, or got into one, you know there's all the things you, you don't know what you don't know until you're in the middle of it. But then also with this being a, a log cabin and trying to keep that feel yeah. and, and to, you know, when you're doing new construction, it's new, 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 and it's all of the modern stuff, which is great. But this has a little history because of its, you know, like I said, going back to being a log cabin, that gave us both challenges, but some options to do some interesting things creatively uh, with, with colors and textures and, and you know, from, from the fireplace, which is one of my favorite pieces of the house. Um, so yeah, just really a, a great project, and uh, it was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of fun to do. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first episode we're going to kick off right now, uh, and I think we're going to start uh, outside. God, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Brad, that's not napalm. We're standing over the septic tank. Oh, gross. There is a house. In New Orleans, they call the ride. So one of the cool things about this project is this is a real log cabin. However, it is a log cabin that's not been well taken care of over the years. So you can see here we've got some wood issues. And what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to keep the log ends, keep that look, because that's really cool. But we're going to be overlaying the damaged materials here with an LP smart siding. Kind of that more modern refresh and update. Um, so we're gonna be taking care of that as one of the exterior projects. Another thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be replacing the HVAC. However, we are doing this in the time of COVID. So with that being the case, a new HVAC is gonna be delayed several weeks. So we're gonna be working on the exterior first, and then from there, we're gonna be moving inside. As Ken mentioned, the exterior of this property hasn't been taken care of. That includes yeah. the windows. So all of these windows are gonna come out. We're gonna replace them with new vinyl windows and frame them in. Give it a fresh look and it'll match the rest of the new material on the exterior. Now, one of the other major issues that we've had is the roof, of course. So the roof will also be replaced. That project was finished about a week ago. 
So we have a brand new 30 year architectural shingle roof. We will also be cleaning up all of the exterior trim and putting on new gutters. All right, so we've talked a little bit about what's going on on the exterior of the cabin. Let's come on inside and take a look at some of the demo work that's going on in the kitchen. Ken, we don't have much of a kitchen left. It does not look like it, but it's an improvement, right? So the idea here is we want to get the interior of the property to a white box. So we're taking out all of the material that we don't want and getting it ready to put in and install the material that we do want. And the guys that are doing that installation are these two. Ryan Hughes, Dave Hughes, Weathered Oak. They're the guys actually swinging the hammer. Ryan, yeah. we were talking a little bit earlier, you found uh, some problems in the kitchen, right? We yeah. have some water damage. Yeah, definitely. How are we going to fix that? Well, fortunately, you got lucky and you have a subfloor under a subfloor, which is really nice. But a lot of this old press board, you can see we pulled out of here, has water damage, it's just junk. So what we're going to do good. is cut out all the stuff that was water damage and then put a new subfloor in to match the existing level of the current subfloor, and that way we can come right back over and tile or, or tile or put our, you know, or put our you know, EPA or anything right back over. So, so we're gonna come back with a brand new surface and fresh OSB, and the nice thing is, is we've got, although the OSB that's on top of it, we've got this one by that's in good condition. Yeah, it's like in this one spot. Yeah, this one spot right here will tear out. We'll put one by and then we'll put that way, it's pretty good. And we'll be ready. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing the rest of this remodel, guys. Yeah, can't wait. So we're here at 27 Notta Road, newest project from RPT Homes Real Pro Team, and we are currently working on a complete full gut remodel of this cabin property. So on the exterior, we're going to be doing everything from new siding to new windows. We're going to be doing a complete landscaping package. Uh, we're changing everything. So the purchase price of this property was $56,000. Mm -hmm. And it is unlivable. Yes. I mean, completely. There was there was no way you were going to inhabit this property without a major remodel. Um, so we feel like we got a good deal at fifty-six thousand. Um, the exterior remodel, including the roof, the siding, all the windows, we're going to do a new HVAC. We're going to yes. estimate that somewhere around thirty-six thousand dollars. That's going to be our first phase of this project. So we'll finish the exterior first, then we'll head to the interior. That's right. The interior is going to be where all the excitement happens. So we're going to be working through new kitchen, new cabinets, flooring, the whole nine yards. That there, we're estimating the cost to be closer to about $38,000 on that, but that still should be within budget. And that phase two of the project, phase one of the purchase price, we're probably going to spend a total of around, we estimate between 100 and 125,000. Now the big question is going to be, what it, what's it going to be worth at the end? Exactly. And we're going to give you that information a little bit later in uh, the last episode of the series um, when we actually show you the sale of the property. So our goal here is to give you a complete, real view of what it's actually like flipping a house in the Ozarks. The, the surprises you find, the things you run into, like we talked about, the delay on the HVAC. Um, so you'll get to journey with us and see some of the fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. One of the biggest challenges uh, that we had, just besides the sheer size of the project, was we were doing this project kind of right in the middle of the pandemic. Yes. And last summer, so this is a year ago in summer of 2021, there were a lot of construction delays. There were, and it was never the same thing twice, it seemed. And it wasn't items that we typically see a delay on, so some of that was kind of a surprise, I think. Definitely. Uh, HVAC system was the big one. Yeah, that definitely surprised me. And, and the, either the length, length of time or the lengths we had to go to to get the pieces. You're not the wrong there. And, and I think that uh, that delay compounded a lot of things uh, because in a project like this, you as a, if, when you get into doing a flip, you have to be really mindful of, of the order you're doing things in because you can't put in flooring in winter when there's no HVAC to keep the house warm. And uh, your heating system does introduce some moisture into the house. Well, you can, but your results may vary greatly. Well, your results will vary. You know, anything wood can expand and contract. And so you need to be climate controlled. Cabinets is another one. Yes. 
can't do cabinets uh, unless you have climate control. You got to keep the humidity balanced, you can keep the temperature balanced, or it just, it leads to uh, issues of fitment and those are just going to have to be fixed in the future. And that goes trim and paint and drywall. Uh, all of those things were things that we couldn't do until we got the HVAC system in. Well, yeah, I mean, you put out the time, the effort, the money, and when you're doing all that, like you said, the, the order of operation is very important to get the end result that you want. Otherwise, you're kind of throwing good money after bad when things that you paid good money for and got good stuff, but because of timing, or like you said, with the HVAC and not having the property ready for that exactly. next stage, um, you can really set yourself back, and, and as it is, you know. A lot of our HVAC set us back a uh, total of four months. Yeah. And, and the HVAC came in, and then something related to the HVAC, but not the HVAC itself, which was all of the vent runs. So that, that's all of the stuff, in this case, underneath or in the attic of this house, that uh, all that air is running through, all of the vent runs and the vents all had to be replaced. And we needed 10 inch vents and uh, we couldn't get them. Nobody, no. we could get four inch or 12 inch, but when we went to try and get 10 inch, the price had tripled. So what it would normally cost $500,000 was gonna cost $2,500 just to get the materials. And so we had to have some changes made. We had to have a little bit of engineering done mm -hmm. and we had to have somebody come in and take a look at the house and look at where the vents were and figure out that we could you know, change something out here, one of the boxes out that was distributing the air and then do a different size vent and still get the same air movement throughout the house. And those are things that you don't typically think about when a house is uh, a flip. You know, in mm -hmm. new construction, it's a little easier to think about, but when it's a flip, you there's you assume there's going to be some things that you don't need to change. And most of the time, we don't change all the vent runs. Yeah, new construction, you order it, it shows up. And you put it in. And basically, yeah, there's no obstructions, just run through, and, and it's a pretty straightforward process, which in this case, didn't didn't turn out to be just the case. But as I sit here today, it feels great. Oh yeah. So we have a brand new HVAC system. Um, and you know, I will say the nice thing is when you change out all events like that, plus, you know, we basically during the initial uh, process of completely doing all the demolition and taking everything that we didn't want out of the house, we changed all the vents and it smells like a brand new house in here. True. And that's kind of a symptom of we changed everything. It's all new. Anything that's moving air around the house is all brand new, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, so we did have a lot of other delays, and we'll move into talking about that in the next segment of the show.